Well, the approach to tackling crime is pretty polarizing. Some people believe in the three strikes law and the lock and key strategy. Others say that method just hasn't worked for decades. KPIX 5's Kenny Choi takes an in-depth look at a non-traditional San Francisco courtroom. It's called young adult court based on the premise that an 18 to 24 year old criminal suspect doesn't fit into juvenile nor adult court. Its ultimate goal is to intercede before it's too late. I was, you know, lost. One of them children that in the streets, roaming the streets, having no future, having no career, nothing. Just three years ago, Maria was facing the possibility of being sent to prison at the age of 23. The crime that I was charged with, I think anybody would look at my resume, honestly, and be like, oh, we don't want to pick this girl up. Growing up in the notorious Sunnydale projects in San Francisco, the 26 year old dropped out of school early on and started stumbling down the criminal path. Some scientists have said that 18 to 24 year olds, they're kind of like cars that are fully formed. They have all the component parts, but sometimes in a stressful situation, the brakes don't work. The developing brain of a potential lifelong criminal who's older than 18 but not quite an adult, some believe, has to be handled differently within the criminal justice system. Judge Bruce Chan is at the helm of a first-of-its-kind courtroom in the country still in its infancy and is a hybrid between juvenile and adult court. Who's coming through this program? I'd say the vast majority are low income. A uh, high percentage has been in the foster care system because they were neglected or abused as children. Nearly all cases involving deadly weapons, serious bodily harm, and gang activity are disqualified. Each year, more than 60 participants are referred by the Public Defender's Office, Adult Probation, Private Counsel, and the District Attorney's Office. We always look at the individual charges and allegations in each case, and that's because public safety is our priority. As part of the program, each participant has to come to this courtroom at least once a week, and it typically takes a year to a year and a half to fulfill all the requirements. This is an incredibly stringent program for these young people. It requires a lot of work. They also attend educational and therapeutic sessions and meet with case managers every week. Make no mistake about it, we hold people accountable. If you don't have somebody there behind you telling you, hey, what did you do this week? Hey, what are you doing to better your life? In return, a potential felony conviction that can permanently derail employment opportunities is avoided. As a public defender, Andrea Lindsay has represented some of the 130 participants who have completed the program since it launched in 2015. These aren't young people whose lives need to be thrown away, need to be put in prison. Incarceration figures show more than 2.3 million people are locked away in prison. The young adult demographic, 18 to 24, is disproportionately represented and has some of the highest rates of behavioral health disorders. You're certainly on the way, so congratulations. Life is dramatically different these days for Maria as well. It's good for you. Working at this food distribution center in the Mission, something that was not too long ago impossible. I see you kind of getting a little emotional. I love it, yeah, the tear will come out because if it wasn't for them, I'd be in the streets. It made me. If it didn't break me, it made me, and I could say it made me, and it's making me into who I am today. The latest data from Young Adult Court shows that 73% of graduates have avoided being rearrested in the city and county of San Francisco, but it is unclear what that number would be if other counties were included. Officials hope to collect more data regarding recidivism and rearrests as more people graduate. In San Francisco, Kenny Choi, KPIX5. For more information about Young Adult Court, head to our website, kpix.com. Uh, we've also posted our full one-on-one -on -one interview with District Attorney Bodine, and we'd like to hear your thoughts on all of this. Do you feel safe in San Francisco? Is the city doing enough to combat crime? Post your comments online using the hashtag KPIX. Thank you for watching. Juliet and Brian will be back with you at 11.